in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to you all as we come together for our Mass today. It's the Wednesday of the 11th week in Ordinary Time. And a special welcome, of course, to the people who are part of this Mass, not only in person, as uh, these days you say, who was it? Tommy Trinder. Did anyone remember Tommy Trinder? And what he, he used to say, you lucky people. <laughs> so, so for the assembled 20 here at St Simon's, I guess, and plus myself, and a couple of readers and so on, we're the lucky ones to be able to be a, able to participate. But for all of those represented over here via the camera and the website mass, it's great that so many people, different people, here, there and everywhere are on board for our Mass each day. Let's just pause for a moment at the beginning of our Mass and we'll ask God's forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you are the strength of those who hope in you. Graciously hear our pleas, since without you mortal frailty can do nothing. Grant us always the help of your grace, so that in following your commands we may please you both by our resolve and by our deeds. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. This is what happened when the Lord took Elijah up to heaven in the whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha set out from Gilgad. Elijah said, Elisha, please stay here. The Lord is only sending me to the Jordan. But he replied, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. And they went on together. Fifty of the Brotherhood of Prophets followed them, halting some distance away as the two of them stood beside the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up and struck the water. And the water divided to left and right, and the two of them crossed over dry shod. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Make your request. What can I do for you before I am taken from you? Elisha answered, Let me inherit a double share of your spirit. Your request is a difficult one, Elijah said. If you see me while I am being taken from you, it shall be as you ask. If not, it will not be so. Now, as they walked on, talking as they went, a chariot of fire appeared and horses of fire coming between the two of them and Elijah went up to heaven in the whirlwind. Elisha saw it and shouted, My father, my father, chariot of Israel and its chargers. Then he lost sight of him and taking hold of his clothes, he tore them in half. He picked up the cloak of Elijah which had fallen and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak of Elijah and struck the water. Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? He cried. He struck the water and it divided to right and left and Elisha crossed over. This is the word of the Lord. 
the response to the psalm, let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you, that you show to those who trust you in the sight of men. Let your hearts take comfort, all who hope in the Lord. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plotting of men. You keep them safe within your tent from disputing tongues. Let your hearts take comfort in all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all you saints. He guards his faithful, but the Lord will repay to the fool those who act with pride. Let your hearts take stay comfort, comfort all those who hope in the Lord. And please stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. All who love me will keep my words, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before men to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win men's admiration. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right is doing. Your almsgiving must be sacred, and your Father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go to your private room and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in that secret place. And your Father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. And when you fast, do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let men know that they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that no one will know you are fasting except your Father, who sees all that is done in secret. And your Father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. I always find it a little amusing to a degree that that is one of the Gospels that's used regularly for Ash Wednesday and that's because it's about penance and so on but it's also about not making a big show of things so we read the gospel and then what do we do then we come up and have ashes put on our forehead so that for the rest of the day everyone will know that we're good Catholics and we've been to Mass and we've got the ashes just in case they didn't know so, so it's, a, it's a bit ironic in its, in its own way that the action that we take on Ash Wednesday is, uh, at least from one interpretation, totally contrary to the, the instruction Jesus gives us in the Gospel. But it's a, a valid and interesting point that is put forward for our consideration. It's not Ash Wednesday, but it's the whole thing of seeking seeking recognition for ourselves and often enough that can be fairly subtle it's not that we necessarily ask to be nominated for something or take out a, a billboard to say look what I've done or look at me that was Kath and Kim wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not that we do that it's 
often the way the, the trap we can easily fall into is simply by the way we for want of a better word report things the way we talk about just oh well someone says well what's been happening oh well I did this and I did that and I did something else and sometimes even subconsciously we give it a bit of a nudge to try and make sure that we come out of the story pretty well not often do we bring in begin the story well how are things oh I messed this up and I messed something else up and I really wrecked this and so on and we try and put the the best possible interpretation on it even for the times when we know deep down we didn't do things too well but Jesus is talking mainly about the sense of, I suppose the word, word is sort of self-aggrandizement, building ourselves up in the sight of others. And as I say, there might, there might be great billboards or, then I'll talk about statues at the moment, that's another story altogether. But statues are getting a bad, bad run at the moment. But in terms of just the way we report things, it's an area where we can take on board what Jesus is saying and to, to be a little careful in the way in which we report things in which we're involved, particularly where it's possible to be giving credit and recognition to others. The temptation can always be there to say, well, yeah, well, he did this and she did that, but... I really fixed it and it mightn't be as blunt or as uh, obvious as that but it's there nonetheless and even subconsciously within ourselves so it's a call to humility a call not to not to grandstand the things that we do that are worthwhile and the sense of just knowing that so much of what we are able to do that is good is a result of the good of others, the good words, good deeds, good example of others, and most of all, the grace of God. Let's stand for our prayers of intercession. Help us to live the new life of Easter so that people may know through us the power of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Every day is a proof of your love. As you bring us to this new day, make us new in mind and in heart. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach us to see you present in others. Help us to recognize you most of all in those who suffer. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Saviour, through the grace of baptism, you have made us children of light. Hear the prayer that we may always walk in that light and work for truth as your witnesses. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And talking of recognition, there's a number of people here today who are part of our parish group called Share the Care. And if ever there's a, a group that quietly goes about its work of visiting and welcoming families and bringing the message of the gospel and of the parish to people. It's those uh, wonderful people from Share the Care. have been doing it for many years here at St Simons and it's a perfect example of great work being done without uh, trumpets being, being blasted or uh, advertisements being put forward. It's just quietly going about and doing the work that has to be done. So very grateful uh, all of us should be as part of the parish for the work that is done. few special remembrances in this Mass today from the memorial book, perhaps on the more happy and positive note. Um, 
Reg Emmons celebrated his 80th birthday yesterday. Happy birthday, Reg. And also, Reg and Lynn have their anniversary tomorrow and Lynn's birthday later in the week. So it's a big week for Reg and Lynn. And so God's blessing on, on you both. And on a, a different and perhaps more sadder note, a recent death of Prince Fernandez and anniversary of death for Mary Fernandez and also for Classen Dias. We place them all in God's loving care. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Oh God, we ask and receive us, so please, for the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, in the offerings we present here, you provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant that the sustenance which they provide may not fail us, either in body or in spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let us offer each other, socially distanced as we are, of course, the sign of the peace and friendship of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now both recognising the many people who are part of our congregation via the, uh, via the website, but also for those who are here present ourselves. This little spiritual communion prayer gives us a very helpful reminder of the, the myst both the mystery and the, the privilege of what we receive in the Eucharist. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, in this reception of your Holy Communion, we foreshadow the union of the faithful in you. May it also bring about unity in your Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone. Hello, it's Peter Evans here again. Father Kevin and the parish team are pleased to announce that we'll be offering a private prayer space at our parish starting this coming Friday, 12th of June, from 1 to 4 p.m. It will be available initially on Monday and Friday every week from 1 to 4 p.m. on each day. We ask people to limit themselves to 15 minutes of private prayer if other people are waiting to use the space. The space will be in the meeting room of the parish centre, which was used for filming of Masses before we returned to the church on 18th of May, so it has been established by practice as a small chapel in these COVID-19 times. This picture shows how it is set up, with an altar, tabernacle, and two kneelers in place, or two chairs if we would rather sit. There will be consecrated hosts in the tabernacle, ensuring you can pray directly in the presence of our Lord. As with everything at the moment, we need to ensure everyone using this space adheres to a strict protocol for your protection and that of the office staff and volunteers. We can accommodate up to two people in the space at any time if they are not living in the same household, or up to four if they are from the same household. If you wish to use the prayer space, we ask that you firstly follow the path directly to the parish office main entrance. When you get to the door, you will press the doorbell. If there is room either in the foyer, which has a limit of one person or a family group, or in the prayer space itself, you will be admitted. Otherwise, we will ask that you wait outside, or, if the weather is inclement, in your car. Once you are granted admittance, you will be asked to provide your first name and a contact phone number, mobile is preferred, to a volunteer or staff member at reception for any subsequent contact tracing that might be required. You will then be granted permission to enter the space through the door that is between the foyer and prayer space, which will already be open. You can then use either a kneeler or chair or both, and we ask that you use only one of each, as we will be cleaning the space frequently. Once you have finished praying, you then exit by the door opposite where you entered into the large space in the parish centre and then exit from the parish centre by the first door you come to. We then ask that you walk along the veranda and up the other path so that we can have a single direction of flow. This also means that you only touch the entrance and exit door handles and the kneeler and or chair, reducing our cleaning load. We know that this is not yet providing the same opportunity as free time to pray in the church whenever you wish, but at the moment we have assessed that this presents the best balance between your safety and our ability to provide a safe space for prayer. We hope it is of some use to some of you. If there is sufficient demand and we can find enough volunteers to supervise the process, we may expand the hours of access in future weeks. May God bless you all.